Hey everybody, do you want to lift for life? Do you want to train forever? Now, forever could be a long time for some people, but ideally that's where I want to be, right? I don't imagine a point in my life, no matter how old, how gray, how bald I am, that I will not want to get in and get some training in. And so far, I've made it 27 years without major incident. I haven't had any major injuries, setbacks to keep me out of the gym. I've stayed relatively highly motivated during that time. And I think it really boils down to three main factors. The first of which is smart programming. Now this can encompass your own programming for yourself, whether you're following a program you found online, maybe you're paying for coaching, maybe you flip flop around all the time, it doesn't matter. But smart programming is essential in order to make progress and stay in the gym consistently. Because if you're hurt, if you're injured, if you're unable to train, if you're at a point where your body is just so broken down, it doesn't make sense, then obviously you won't be able to train forever. Now, smart programming for me usually entails having some sort of waves in terms of cycles. So for me, interested in powerlifting at the current time, I make sure that I'm balancing things out, meaning if I have a couple of heavy weeks that it's offset by lighter weeks and I'm never going full gas all the time because that's just not sustainable, especially as I get older. Other things that have been really helpful here have been RPE or reps in reserve type training where I'm really basing it off how I feel that particular day and not just sticking to straight linear periodization and progressions where if I'm not feeling the best, some of those heavier numbers may in turn lead me to setting myself back through injury, pain, whatever the case may be. Smart programming is definitely the way to go. Now, the second point is doing something that you enjoy, meaning that, yeah, you could find a really smart program. You could find something that is considered the most optimal program in the world. But if you don't enjoy what you're doing day in and day out, you're either not going to put the effort in, which I'll get to in my third point and how that plays a role, or you're just not going to want to train at all. And typically you will get burnt out from doing that because you're not enjoying what you're doing. So it's really important to kind of go after the things that make training enjoyable for you. That might be a specific type of training, a specific program, paying for a coach, getting certain equipment if you're training at home with specialty equipment that really kind of make things fun. And it's not just the same exercise over and over and over again. Whatever that means to you, you need to find it, embrace it, and continue to ride that train as long as you can. And when it's time to hop off that train, it's time to find another one. So find out again what excites you, what gets you motivated, and will lead you to getting into the gym. Because at the end of the day, even if something is not the most optimal, if you're more akin to go and do it, that's all the better in my opinion. Now, third and finally, the last thing that I'd like to talk about in terms of things that make the gym sustainable for life is setting your expectations accordingly. Meaning as you get older, more and more will get piled on your plate. From work, to kids, to school, to whatever the case may be, training, whether you like it or not, will likely take a back seat. That means not as many days in the gym, not as many hours in the gym, and likely not as much progress in the gym. I think the problem people have is they expect a certain level of progress, when in some cases, the training structure they have or have to have just can't support that. Case in point, if you're working overnight shifts, you're working two jobs, you're on the road a lot, maybe you have a young family at home you need to help out with, whether that be with taking care of a baby, getting kids to school, to sports, whatever the case may be that you're involved in, it just takes time away from the gym. And if you're in the gym less, you're likely not going to be able to sustain that same progress over time. Not to mention with the fact that as you get older and your training age increases, your progress is just going to become slower. And a lot of people have trouble accepting that. So if you're able to really base your expectations and progress to what your age and your training structure can support, I think that's going to lead to a more stress-free training environment, which is why many of us like to train in the first place to relieve stress, get progress, and just enjoy what we're doing. And if you're really frustrated with lack of progress or unattainable progress due to the structure that you have, you're going to be in for a bad time and that's not going to let you continue to train forever. So at the end of the day, training for life is a pretty simple blueprint of finding something that's smart in terms of programming to keep you healthy, finding something that you enjoy so you're more apt to put effort in and go and do it, and setting your expectations for progress accordingly to make sure you're not getting burnt out. Hopefully this video helps. Let me know if you have any comments in the comment section below. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.